Now it's no secret that I spend a lot of time here on Gen X Grown Up talking about Atari. And it's because it was very important to me growing up. It was part of my formative years. I had that Atari growing up to play games. It was my first home computer. You know, as a brand, it was something that I identified with and formed, you know, part of my identity as a nerd growing up in the uh, 70s and 80s. But interestingly, my entry into Atari was not Atari at all, but was in fact a Sears telegames video computer system. Now I hadn't had one since I sold mine to buy a home computer back in 84, 85. However, over the weekend at a local used video game store, I came across a really good condition. Year one, pretty sure year one, 1977, Sears telegames computer system, the 2600 effectively, and I picked it up and I wanna share it with you right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thanks for clicking on this. Uh, I, I have no script for this video. This is really, I just wanna share the experience that I am having Dis rediscovering this Sears telegame system. I, I was at a store, I had some credit left over, I shouldn't have been spending money at all because as you know, I'm trying to be full-time YouTube and I'm not making money at it and it's costing me, but sometimes you come across things and you just can't let them go. I last had a video computer system from Sears, a heavy sixer, a six switcher, 40 years ago? And since then I've not owned one until now until last weekend, and now it's on the table. Let's <laughs> take a look. Starting here with the box. Now this is very much not an Atari box and very, very much is a Sears box. It has the Sears Best logo down here in the corner. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the box other than, look, the box is in remarkable condition. And that told me that whoever owned this, if you kept the box this good, you probably took care of your stuff in general. And the things I really like at what you see on the box is this is early electronics. This is early video gaming. They had to explain so much to you that we take for granted now. Like look down the right hand side here. They tell us this is a cartridge video game console. It attaches to your TV. That was relatively new. Uh, it's used game cartridges that plugs in. Action sounds through your TV speaker, not through uh, through the, you know a speaker that's on the device. Uh, option switches, plays in color on color sets, if you happen to have a color set. Operates on channel three only. I guess that was before we had a little uh, toggle slide. Uh, includes one set of handheld remote controllers for other optional game cartridges. And then around here on the back of the box, we have another beauty shot. And this is in that, that time when a cartridge-based system wasn't the norm. We weren't expecting that. They didn't know. And so they kind of double duty here. Yes, they say it has this cartridge and they call out the fact that it's a cartridge based system, but it's also highlighting specifically game types that are in target fun. I, um, oh, air sea battle, uh, for uh, Atari, but target fun for Sears. Uh, and it's showing, you know, the shooting gallery, aircraft, torpedo, missile, bomber, things like that that you can play, yeah, 27 different games. <laughs> that was okay, there's a few, six different games with some variations. All right, enough of the box, in great shape. Let's take a look at the contents. Inside of a little Ziploc bag in the box is this original Sears price sticker, $179.99 in 1977. And here's what that bought you. The Sears Telegames Video Arcade, effectively the Atari VCS, later renamed the 2600. And there's a few pieces of evidence that make me believe, and I'm pretty sure this is from year one. This is 1977 release. And we'll go over that in a second, but I'm not gonna call this complete, but it's complete to the point that it has all of the parts there. Like it doesn't have all the manuals, it doesn't have all the packing material, but all the composite and requisite pieces are here. We have two joysticks. We have a set of Sears paddles or even Sears branded power supply. We have a television switch and the pack-in target fun game. Uh, let's start with this box game. So this is the original Sears Telegames target fun, 27 games. On the back is that cool little chart of the different game variations. Sears badge down here. And these early ones, of course, weren't top loaders. They had this little gatefold deal. Uh, this one, uh, yeah. The cartridge is here, the manual is here. You can even take a quick peek at the manual and see, oh yeah, yeah. Now of course this one says right down in the quarter, 1977 Sears Roebuck Company. 
So even if this wasn't sold in 77, I mean, it was printed in 1977. You know, pretty decent shape, not too dog-eared or anything. Nice shape. The cartridge is still here. Uh, the whole thing, you can see is dusty. Look at this as I, <laughs> it needs, it all needs some help, some tender loving care. Uh, they say it works, which we're gonna find out, I guess, but I mean, the cart is here. Uh, yeah, decent shape. So this was the original pack-in, just as it appeared. Now, what we don't know, of course, is this the one that came with this set? I'm thinking so, but you never know when you buy secondhand, right? Players of a certain age certainly know what this is. This was a little box that you had to take the antenna wires, put them on here, run your 2600 in there, and then hook this up and let you switch between them. I mean, you know, I see all those memes that say, kids will never believe that you had to play on channel three. You did, you had to play on channel three. Uh, and then a power supply. And though it's Atari branded, I'd never seen one that was gray like this, but in my digging through like eBay listings of comparable early telegame systems, it did come gray. So I'm guessing this is the original, maybe, maybe not. It could be a replacement, you know, later in the life of the thing, but uh, it has the power supply included certainly, so that's good. We have that set of paddle controllers. Now these are Sears branded paddle controllers that, <laughs> uh, you know, Sears put their own little markings on. It feels okay, I mean, for being you know, 40 some years old. How about this one? Yeah, they're all right. Now this one has a little bit of separation at the plug. And while I don't see any actual damage or, you know, wires exposed, this has been separated somewhat from the plug. Hopefully it still works uh, uh, as it should. And uh, maybe that can be patched a little bit. I'm not sure. When I was at the store and first opened this box, this was the first clue to me that this was a year one telegame system. And, you know, keen viewers who are watching very closely and know their Atari stuff, this is not an Atari CX40 joystick. This is an Atari CX-10 joystick. These were only released during the first year, 1977. And uh, they're a little bit different internally. I'm thinking I might even do a video comparing the internals of the CX-40 to the CX-10. Uh, I mean, you'll tell me if you're interested in seeing something like that. I know I certainly am, uh, but the differences, uh, they're mostly internal. Uh, the button has a little deeper throw to it. And also right on the top here, I hope you can see now, the top of this is not flush, there's a little indent. And that's because there would have been a little metal badge there, a little uh, hexagon that said Sears right on it. The Atari version said Atari right on it. Now these notoriously popped off, the glue wasn't very good and they're gone, but that's one of the many reasons that I think this whole system is from the first year of the Telegames, 1977, because this joystick was not even distributed beyond 1977. I mean, sure, you could have gotten some old CX-10s and put them with a newer system, but all the little pieces are adding up to tell me that this is a very, very early Telegames system. Speaking of Telegames, how about the console itself? This is the part of the video normally where I would pause to remind you we have a merch store and to talk about our podcast and say visit our Discord server and all of that. I'm not gonna do that. You know all that stuff. I wanna get back to this Telegame system. Here she is. And Atari devotees will tell you right away, this is what's called a sixer. And in the case of this one being early, a heavy sixer. Uh, now, how do you tell? First, pick it up. If it's heavy as hell, it's it's a, probably a heavy sixer. Uh, why is it so heavy? A couple of different reasons. A lot of people will say, well, it's a lot of shielding because of early FCC rules. Part of that's kind of true. Also, it just, they were built better. They were built heavier. Uh, and then in later years, they're like, well, how can we reduce costs? We'll make things thinner. We won't make them so heavy. We'll make the molds a little bit uh, lighter. And so two things happened. It got lighter. And then also uh, they moved these switches around to the back for the, the four switches and things like that. This one, of course, being the Telegames and being the one that I had, the thing that grabbed me right away is the different wood grain here. It's this walnut finish wood grain rather than that kind of uh, blonde, long striped pine look or whatever it is on the standard Atari. This walnut look is what you have on the uh, the telegames. And maybe it's because that's what I had when I was a kid, but I'm very partial to this design over the other design for the wood grain. Not a whole bunch to see around back, except of course, this little sticker with the serial number. And it verifies that this very device was manufactured for Sears by Atari in Sunnyvale, California. Uh, and I have my serial number here. I, I don't know, somebody keep a database of these? I'm not sure. I think there's more identifying information inside. And I'm not going to try to open this up or do any interior investigation in this video, but it's something that I could do in the future, certainly. And this particular one looks remarkable at first glance, but it has a few imperfections. You can see that the chrome around the perimeter of the control panel has some little scuffs in it. You can also see around the edges of the unit. It's been just 
not dinged, but certainly scuffed a little bit around the edge. Now, all of that is kind of some, some age, some wear, patina. Doesn't mean I'm gonna necessarily redo everything, but I'm open to the input of my viewers to tell me how to best enjoy this piece of history without modifying it or destroying it such that it's not original anymore, but making it as good as it can be for my collection. I mean, this, this is the first one of these I've owned since I owned one back in the early 80s, probably 81 or so. Um, and now I have, this is the second heavy sixer I've owned. The first one, I was like 12. The second one is now. All right, let's say we hook it up to my TV and give it a play for the first time. All right, here we go. Let's power them on. <laughs> it's a black and white <laughs> and it did come on and it looks pretty good but in color yeah all right so well we know the power and the color black and white works uh expert novice uh, you can't see visually what it's doing but i mean these switches they feel fine uh let's try the uh, just that sound i just need those sounds as text tones on my phone you know yeah now Target Fun is a single, sorry, is a double player game only. But uh, yeah, we're still gonna give it a try. So this is the CX-10, which I've never actually used. Oh, that button, that button is deep. Oh, you have, to, you have to move the stick a little farther than I'm accustomed to on these, right? I had heard that. There's the little uh, guided missile version. Come here, ships. I wanna shoot you. There you are. Got him. <laughs> it all seems great. Let's try another game or two out of my box over here. Yeah, there's a little Yar's Revenge. Seems a little dark to me. Could be in my imagination, or maybe it's the TV. Or maybe I've been playing too much emulation. I forgot what it looks like. Oh, missed him. Oh, I did get him when he came back. In general, the CX-10s, you have to lean a lot farther. So they're less responsive. So I'm going to guess most people collect them just to say they have them rather than being their favorite controller. But... Uh, for me, it's just I'm not very familiar with them. I thought Moon Patrol was a pretty good arcade conversion for the VCS, honestly. I never owned it when I was a kid, but I think it's pretty good. And just for fun, let's try out some Street Racer to see if these paddles are working. So, there's the left player. Looks like the gas is working and the steering is working. Yeah, okay. And left, uh, right player, rather. Yeah. All in all, I would say... Awesome working condition, decent cosmetic condition, and a great find as far as I'm concerned. Thank you for watching this video and sharing with me the experience of exploring this new pickup, this new find, turning it on for the first time, playing a few games for the first time. I'm so happy to have a heavy sixer Sears telegames again in my hands, in my collection. Uh, and please do let me know in the comments, like what are the things I can do? Obviously I can clean it up. I can, is there something I should be looking for? Is there something, you know, that, hey, you missed out on some super feature it has that I don't know about, or uh, is it the lineage that I should know more about with the CX-10s and that sort of thing. It, look, the last time I owned one, I was just a dumb kid that knew how to play games. I was not analyzing at it all. And now that I have one, I'm looking at the history of it. As equal parts to playing the games, I'm looking at the history of it. So uh, I'm interested in what you, people who know more about these old systems than I do even, tell me down in the comments what you think. Uh, in the meantime, I'll throw some links over my shoulders here and here. Some other Atari coverage, there's plenty of it that I've done. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video and I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.